Mukesh Kapila joins me now from Geneva to evaluate the emergency response. He is a professor of global health and humanitarian affairs at the University of Manchester in the United Kingdom and served as the former director for emergency response at the World Health Organization. Professor, great to have you on with us. I know you've been watching uh, all the coverage of the earthquake. So I'm wondering, 13 days later, what is your assessment of the emergency response? Awesome. I think uh, in my th three decades of experience, the response to this earthquake from within Turkey and uh, from around the world, I have never seen that again. And I've also, by the way, been in uh, Turkey in Azinjan in 1992 uh, when there was an earthquake there also. So in terms of the uh, national, local and global response, it's never been as big, as fast, and as uh, comprehensive. Obviously, it's no consolation to all the thousands of people who have waited to be rescued or to be helped. So we mustn't get complacent. But in terms of response, which is your question, I do not think uh, uh, how it can be faulted, though, of course, there are lessons to be learned. And uh, we will learn the lessons at the right time for uh, future quakes here and elsewhere. So as far as those lessons to be learned, what do you think uh, could be done to be more effective and save more lives next time? Well, next time around, I think it's important to build local capabilities more. So in other words, we know uh, from countless disasters of all types all around the world that most lives are saved in the minutes and hours immediately after a, after a disaster. And it's obviously done by neighborhoods uh, and uh, local organizations, whether it's local search and rescue teams or local humanitarian uh, bodies, the local Red Crescent branches, for example. So what that means is that the, the, the system for, uh, for search and rescue and response should be as decentralized as possible so that it can swing into action immediately when uh, these things uh, happen. And then uh, uh, the second thing is that uh, there has to be sufficient uh, stockpiles and sufficient uh, contingency arrangements to back them up. Because a massive uh, disaster like this, nobody can do enough preparation uh, for it. And obviously backup is going uh, to be needed. Third uh, lesson is, I think, is to continue to reduce the bureaucracy that is always there whenever many organizations come together to work with each other. I was impressed by how the bureaucracies I've encountered in other places around the world have been minimized in this particular case, but I think we can do better. And fourthly, I think the important thing is that the, the immediate phase after the rescue should be put into helping the survivors in a, with as much energy as any rescue effort uh, has uh, enjoyed. So as to minimize the secondary um, harms that people suffer, the traumas, as well as, of course, uh, the possibility of additional deaths and uh, disease and so on that uh, usually happens after disasters like this. When you talk about the first minutes and hours after a disaster such as these earthquakes being critical to saving lives, uh, I know it seems uh, highly unlikely that there would be any international support or even national support. Uh, so it's many in many cases, it's the neighbors and just average people in the community who are rescuing people. What can be done to better educate or train people so that more lives can be saved uh, in the future? And, and also with the added challenge of we don't know when or where these disasters are going to strike. Indeed. And I think disaster-prone countries, uh, that, that is not just uh, earthquake-prone countries like Turkey, but uh, many countries have other hazards at play, flooding, cyclones, and so and, and landslides, uh, and, and so on. So uh, uh, they must be continuously prepared. And that also means that uh, ordinary people in their schools and communities, in their colleges and neighborhoods should have basic life-saving skills. I think in today's world, every single person on the planet uh, needs to be skilled in first aid, for example. Every child needs to be taught the basics of first aid. And every community center, every mosque, church, and so on uh, should be centers where people can seek refuge or from where uh, uh, efforts can be launched to, to rescue and uh, help uh, their neighborhoods. So it is, in a sense, democratizing and spreading 
the basic skills and knowledge. You know, we've been seeing uh, impressive pictures of heavy machinery lifting blocks of concrete, and I'm afraid those requirements will always remain if you have devastation of such uh, magnitude. But quite honestly, uh, uh, earlier than that even, it is, you know, the thousands that were rescued uh, early in the early days, they were done by local people and local assets and local machinery. So, uh, but it requires skills. You can't just go around digging the rubble or, uh, uh, you know, you might cause more uh, harm than, uh, than anything. So basic skilling in schools and colleges, starting from, uh, from a childhood, uh, would, I think, be a very good investment as part of general education and training for populations in an increasingly disaster-prone world. Excellent point there with the basic uh, first day can go, go a long way to saving lives. Mukesh Kapala joining us from Geneva. Thank you so much.